So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Kauri Moraes Vestena. I'm a student at the Federal University of Paraná and also the Polytechnic of Indiana, whereas I'm a, a visiting researcher. My advisors are Professor Silvana, Professor Daniel, and Professor Maria Bruvelli. Uh, so, today I'm going to present you this work that's called Fostering OSM Micromapping Through Combined Use of Artificial Intelligence and Street View Imagery. So, uh, first of all, what is micromapping? Yeah, there's this uh, loose definition of uh, Schmidt, that is the mapping of uh, small geographic <laughs> objects, okay? But this is the campus of, of Leonardo campus at the, the Politecnico di Milano. And you may say that uh, in the, in you have all the, all the bathrooms, you have all the benches, you have all, all the, the, the trash cans. So you have a very detailed way of mapping with many details on the map, on the map. So there are some examples of something, some uh, features that can be deemed as uh, micromapping and the tags. So we have like trees of natural tree, street lamp as like a street lamp <laughs> and uh, power poles that are similar, but are different and benches and also like a trash cans or waste baskets. So uh, where, where uh, the micromapping can be useful? Uh, so there are lots of, of applications for features that uh, come out on this loosened category of micromapping. So mainly for, for example, urban asset management. So you have all the plates, you have all traffic signs and stuff. Uh, you have like an indoor mapping, like a detailed uh, uh, the detailed plans of buildings, uh, uh, some systems for management, also for uh, pedestrian se security and flow prediction, so you, you know where are you know, on the pathway of pedestrians, also for uh, detailed 3D mapping, so if you have all the information there about at least the height of all the, all the features, you can render them on a 3D map. And also for assistive technologies, because if you know if you have like the pathway of the sidewalk, and you know if uh, if for example um, if uh, um, a pole uh, on the left side or the right side, you can make like really uh, improved uh, assisted uh, routing for for example blind people. Uh, so uh, there are drawbacks or, or some <laughs> controversy on the topic. So I recovered this uh, very early talk from, from 2011, but uh, a, a guy is saying that at some point uh, someone would be like mapping every blade of grass. Yeah, uh, that's saying that probably this is like a waste time of mappers that uh, at some point they, they, instead of being like mapping roads, they were mapping like every blade of grass. It, it, was an exaggeration, but it was like a part of the point of that time. Yeah, and there uh, at the wiki, some people complaining about uh, stuff on, on on the time that needs to render the map, and uh, it's what people are saying uh, about this. Yeah, uh, but uh, what uh, in the present are the the the, the trends now? We have the the preeminence, the the advent of many new uh, uh, field, field mapping that they are generally centered on mapping, like my, micro map, do micro mapping on, on, on the features that are on, uh, on the small scale mapping, like uh, for example, every door, like a map complete and the very popular street complete, yeah? Uh, and the thing is that this generates uh, some particular way of uh, ways of editing because this is on the ways, yeah. Uh, because micro mapping is also about attributes. So, like uh, you have a, a, this very detailed description of every object that you can find. So, if you look up here at the modifying, so we have this huge trend on the amount of features that are getting just modified. For example. The, the, the question that there is on Street Complete, those that bench got a backrest, and you answered that's something that's very detailed for the bench. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there are these kind of features like micro mapping uh, available globally. 
So uh, let's take a look on the data. Okay, that is from 2018. It's a little bit old, but it's uh, the newest that I could find at uh, our, our song. And we see if you have the example of power poles, uh, we have uh, like uh, that. Uh, this is the image from from NASA of of all the the lightning. That's not exactly the power poles, but it's related. <laughs> that's important to say. But you see, you see that most of them are, are, are all concentrated on Europe and all other countries that got many power poles. I can assure you that there's lots of power poles on Brazil, for example. Uh, they, got the, they are in the, in the last quartile of the data. Uh, and uh, if you see like, the difference between the, how much buildings we got, yeah, like uh, almost 500 million compared to, uh, with the amount of power poles and street lamps. There's a huge difference, but still we got a trend of high ever growing uh, mapping on both categories, power poles and street lamps. So uh, then uh, how to speed up this process of getting more data on this, this kind of data, yeah? Uh, so, well, the data many times is frequent, frequently already there. So we have many services uh, and we have other alternatives to Mapillary, yeah? but Mapillary is it's the, the, the one with the biggest word coverage. So we have, for example, there lots of triangulated features. So we have displays that appears in many images and we can, using photogrammetry, we can triangulate the position of this plate, for example. Yeah? Photogrammetry is a very well-established science. Uh, but uh, there are some challenges on photogrammetry that, uh, you know, uh, many sequences are, we have just one sequence for a road. So, uh, for, for we have a, a good uh, determination of the 3D coordinates on photogrammetry, we need to have uh, a geometry that's similar to an equi uh, to a, a triangle that each side has the same the same length. Uh, but when we are on a front face front facing sequence of imagery, we frequently have this condition. So uh, if we trace the uh, some error inter interval for a good condition, we have a, a, a small region of of uncertainty, but if if we have, if we have the bad uh, the bad geometric geometric configuration, uh, we have a, a bigger uh, a bigger uh, uh, area of uh, that we are not confident about that about that coordinate. Yeah, uh, so it becomes very very sensitive for small errors. So small errors grown up a lot. Yeah, uh, and we have another challenges on photogrammetry. For example, in this road you have only two plates, but they are identified three because you need to match every one with the right one. And if you look at this at this detail, we have like the same plate detected on what was deemed as the same plate on the two sides of the road because they are just the same visual pattern, yeah? So this is a pro this is our problems uh, with traditional methods on photogrammetry. You need to, to see features in more than one, uh, in more than one image, yeah? And you have to match these patterns and make sure that they are the right amount of patterns, like uh, not, there are three, and here, here in the map are three, and on, on the reality, there are two of them. Uh, okay, so then alternatives to this. So uh, I got, uh, as a researcher, I got very interested on this top, uh, this growing topic of research that is called monocular depth. That is like using a neural network to predict the depth uh, using a single, a single, e a single image. Sorry. Uh, so this, for example, is is a paper from Toyota Research. So we got like here the image, this is the depth prediction, and this is it rendered as a 3D uh, point cloud. 
So there are many, uh, many uh, different structures of networks for, for creating uh, for creating single view that. But this one is like uh, easier to explain. So we have like the left image and another uh, right, left and right image, and the neural network predicts the depth. Using the right image and doing inverse warping, we recreate the left image and we, co we, we compare uh, the photometric error. And these are used uh, as, the, as, the, as the function to be minimized, to reduce this error, to improve the predicted depth. This is one of the most popular structures. So you uh, uses like uh, uses stereo just to train the network, and then you use the network to predict that. Uh, and then the other building block of the methods is the semantic segmentation that you generally have uh, these uh, convolutional narrow neural networks of uh, uh, encoding and decoding. It's generally two steps of uh, progress, progressive uh, downsampling and then uh, upsampling up again. So you have each pixel, each pixel of the image uh, uh, as a predicted class. So we have like a cow, sky, and uh, vegetation, and background, for example, on this. But this got its limitations because at some point you may need to, to have a new category that aren't seen, that have not been seen at the training stage. So you have like what is like the second generation of semantic segmentation that is the call it zero shot uh, semantic segmentation, where you can uh, ask for classes that were not seen at the training stage because it uses like uh, some knowledge domain transfer, like using, for example, some kind of uh, natural language processing. So you can ask for categories that were not present on at the training time. Uh, so this is the basic idea of the method. So this is like a real-time implementation that is not part of my work. It's just to, it's just from this guy to illustrate the, the idea. So you like you have the image, you have the semantic segmentation of, of objects, and you have the the and you have the depth prediction. So in the end, you're gonna have three batches, yeah, of the features, and it's basically this. So you can imagine, like for example, a ramp. So you ask for a ramp. You have the three D patch of the ramp, and using this three D patch, you you will be able to extract uh, attributes of that feature, uh, features of the feature, <laughs> uh, and for example, you will have like uh, or from this three D patch of of this ramp, you will be able to extract that it's a barrier curve, it's a curve lowered, it's a ramp. So this is the two tags that are do uh, use it to uh, to do the characterization of with this. And then you have the other features of it. So you can have the width here, uh, that's very important for mobility, and the incline as well. And you can even pick that the color of it is gray. So now I'm going to show what I got so far by now because I didn't went too, too deep on this, deep on this research. Uh, so uh, we got like very promising uh, results on the semantic segmentation side. So these are predictions of sidewalks. Uh, that is something that interests me a lot. Mainly to get the, the effective, eff effective width of the sidewalk. So we can have like the dense 3D patch of it and ana do analysis on many parts of the 3D patch of a sidewalk and then get the wheel. Yeah. Uh, another category that I got to test was the poles that uh, it's also very interesting, like a uh, general interest. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is the first part. But uh, considering monocular depth, okay. This ramp is okay. I measured like the, the the slope of it, and it's very near to the to the real one. I went there and I measured it with the smartphone. But when we look at poles, uh, okay, they are very distorted and not uh, like a very uh, useful results. 
So uh, at the first point, uh, you're saying that things that are nearby the, the ground level, you can use, but for poles, not that much. But uh, okay, uh, going straight to the, to the final remarks of the work, uh, the model that results are, are not promising, but there's a huge variety of models to test before discarding it as a method. I was only able to test just one model that was supposed to give me metric depth. But I measured like the, the, the wheelbase of this Ford Focus here, and it was supposed to have 2.5 meters, and it only got like a half meter. So yeah, this, it was not real metric depth. Yeah, using the presets of the camera and everything, but no. Uh, so, uh, okay, it's also possible to train a model because the main idea of, of, of this work is to pick, uh, to pick models that are ready to go so you can implement this for uh, the final user of OSM in some kind of, of, of tool. Uh, but maybe it would be necessary to train a model using uh, a sequence of mobility, a sequence of mobility imagery, uh, or would be possible to use the patches from semantic segmentation that are good uh, with traditional photogrammetry, but uh, looking for methods to select good geometric scenarios, which which would also be limiting for cases where you got like a, like a, a single single sequences, yeah. And uh, I'm more, more concerned on, uh, on uh, traditional uh, perspective images because if you have like a, like a, like a panoramic image, you can reproject it and have good and uh, always have good, uh, good, uh, good geometry. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's just a, a matter of uh, there's uh, regular images are more uh, globally available. Still, yeah, these days. Uh, okay, so this work is that there's have the potential to ameliorate ameliorate uh, the amount of features deemed deemed as micro mapping in urban uh, scenarios. So uh, this is was my presentation. Uh, thank you, audience. We have some time for questions. Uh, all right, I have a question. Go ahead, please, Mike. It's the microphone is necessary for the recording. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go. Um, Blended simulation uh, is a way to uh, compensate the, the geometric problem perspective feature, but uh, if we have more uh, dynamic ones, uh, it's just to less, have a, yes, a good it's less plan. necessary or even this less. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, um, is the, the quality of the picture uh, important uh, to do uh, the, the segmentation or, or some, some estimations on, on that? The, the, Preserving the original quality of the picture or having the highest quality or highest resolution does it matter or not? No. Well, in this new kind of uh, semantic segmentation, like uh, that's generally they combine lots of methods, yeah? Like, for example, this one uses uh, segment and hint alongside, um, um, it's, uh, another model that I just forgot the name is Grounding Dino, that is a model that have a large vocabulary. So uh, the idea is to have like a, a good uh, a, a good segmentation in any scenario. But as far as I tested, uh, it generally doesn't matter because, for example, on this image you have the you have some uh, glare here, and it's also giving a good result. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, there's some critic points that uh, you end up not having a good segmentation. But uh, these networks are, are, are always uh, are trained to, in, to 
to perform well in even stressful scenarios. Like uh, you have bad imagery, you have lower resolution, and things like this. But unfortunately, I doesn't have methods. <laughs> I didn't made like uh, okay, let's test it and downsample uh, and or put some random noise and see if the if it kept because yeah, I, it's an ongoing research. It's just to some very initial uh, results. I, I would uh, help. Uh, I hope to have like the scientific answer for that, but I don't have it. Other questions? Uh, have you tried the uh, object detection and uh, not uh, segmentation? Because I'm uh, on panoramic picture, I've done uh, object detection for road signs, for example, it works very well. Uh, on some, well, they are easy to recognize, you know, they are always looking the same. Um, but uh, I've, we have not uh, trained the model yet for, uh, uh, for objects like benches and things like that, but we, we plan to do things like that and do uh, train our own model uh, uh, in a collaborative way because. Uh, I prefer to know what is in uh, what is in the training, so I, yeah. I know the limits. But it's true that you train with a large variety of quality of uh, picture, and for the training we did, I used picture I shot more than ten years ago with my first iPhone, uh, and, uh, and some with a very high resolution that we have today, and uh, to have a mix of everything and bad lighting, uh, uh, glare, uh, all, all all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. My major concern was about uh, uh, selecting uh, models that would have a, a, a um, um, like OBDL. Just I, I, li I license that it's that it's friendly to OpenStreetMap. That was my main my main concern. So it, that's the reason that I picked up really to go models, even though. Uh, I, I will, I'm not that sure about what they use it as, as, as samples for the training. But yeah, I'm way more interested on, on like uh, semantic segmentation because I'm generally more interested on, on my research yeah, to have like dense patches that, that you can extract more things and not just the nature of that thing or, or for have a single point, but for you to extract widths, lengths, uh, slopes, one thing that I'm very concerned, for example, is to extract, like, for example, the across track uh, incline that in some places we have sidewalks with the ramps in the middle of the sidewalk and it affects a lot uh, the, the level of accessibility. So with a dense, a dense patch, you can extract that, like on the ramp, uh, otherwise no. So one there, let's see. Hi, uh, apologies if you come this in the first few minutes, so I've missed the first few minutes. Uh, but can you uh, tell us a little about, about the hardware you use you know, in terms of is it consumer grade uh, cameras, uh, that sort of thing? Or do I need to go and check the recording? You've already talked about that. Yes, I, I think that I just didn't get uh, a speed checker. The hardware. Ah, the yeah, the hardware that I was using to process the data. It was a GeForce. Uh, to collect. Oh no, the collect. The, the, no, no, no. This is uh, like a public, like a public. Uh, is like like a public available uh, service that's called Mobility. Okay. It's a from Mobility. Yes, all the images came from Mobility. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I guess. Thank you.